Hello, and thank you for watching our video on access lists presented by RouteHub. This video we're going to talk about access lists in terms of what it is and talk about not just that, but talking about network flows that occurs between one computer to the next. So these are some of the things we're going to be talking about. We'll be talking about a little bit about TCP and UDP, talk about some of the network flows and provide some examples and discuss some of the types of access lists including some configuration examples of some of those types of access lists. So one of the things you learn about in Networking 101 and about the OSI model is that on layer 4, that is the transport layer. And the transport layer protocols are TCP and UDP. Now for a transport layer protocol, they use port number information. For example, when I say HTTP, it uses port 80 with TCP. And we'll, we will provide an example to explain this a little bit further. So let's talk about these two uh, transport layer protocols a little further. TCP. So TCP is considered as a connection-oriented protocol, which makes it reliable. It makes it reliable because, skipping ahead here, it uses a mechanism called the three-way handshake, where one um, device sends out a SIN, then the other end acknowledges that send packet, and then with that, the other end will send back an awk, an, an acknowledgement. So this is basically part of the three-way handshake that TCP uses for ensuring a reliable connection. However, because of this, it is considered a lot slower. Some examples of TCP and how it can be used is something like TCP port 80, which is reference to HTTP, or TCP 21, which is reference for FTP control, or FTP data. FTP control would be um, port 20. UDP. UDP is kind of the opposite of what TCP is. It is considered as a connectionless protocol, but is reliable. It does not do any kind of a three-way handshake of a SYN, a SYNAC, and, a, and then another acknowledgement. But because it doesn't do that, it is considered a lot faster. Some examples of uh, UDP, for example, is uh, UDP port number 69, which is for TFTP, or UDP port number 161, which is referenced for SNMP. Network flows. So network flow pretty much provides a detail of a network connection between two particular nodes. Some of the major components of a network flow is things such as the source and destination IP address, the application that is being used, including protocols and port numbers. Now, let's talk about this a lot further using graphical examples, since the picture speaks a thousand words. So this is one of the same kind of graphics that we use for one of our other videos on IP routing. It's the same one. In this particular example, we have two particular um, subnets, actually three. We have host A, and on host is on the subnet 192.168.1.0. The host ID for this is .10. On the other end, we have another um, segment, which is on 192.168.2.0. And here we have a server, and it's on 2.10. And we're going to say that this is a web server. So like when you go to yahoo.com or google.com, basically you're accessing a web server. So these are the main connection components of how this works. So now, this, now we're taking the same graphical example and we're taking out all the other fluff. And now we're looking at this in terms of the actual connection. That a host, a computer, like you at home right now, with your IP address configured on your, on your computer or being NATed at your firewall or um, internet gateway is going to initiate a connection to the web server and this is its IP address. So these are some of the connection components that we will be walking through one by one. The source and destination IP addresses. We want to first identify those. What is the application that is being used? What is the transport protocol that is used for that application? What is the protocol port number, which includes source and the destination, not just one end? And including the client access method to that application. Step number one. So host A or host wants to talk to the server. 
Well, the first thing you need to do is to identify the source and the destination IP addresses. So we know that host, our computer, is, want, is going to communicate to the server. So the source, in this case, is the one that is initiating the request, which would be 192.168.1.10. The destination is, well, what the, what the computer wants to communicate with, the web server. And that destination IP address is 192.168.2.10. So we identify the source and destination IP addresses. Let's continue with our connection. Now, let's identify the application that will be used. So, so the host wants to communicate with the server. Well, communicate how? You're like, oh, I want, it's, a, it's a web server. I want to access it. I want to access the routehub.com website, for example. What is the application? This will be considered as a web connection or an HTTP connection, since this is a web server. So we want to make notes that this is an HTTP connection. Continuing, now for HTTP, which transport protocol uh, do we use, TCP or UDP? And basically, we will learn that HTTP basically uses the TCP transport protocol. Therefore, we will say that this connection between the host and the server is going to be a TCP connection that will be built. Step four. Next, we want to identify the port number, the protocol port number for the source and the destination for the connection. This is the most common mistake that I, um, that I have gotten for years. That everybody says, well, yes, I know that the port number for a web server is port 80. But a lot of people kind of forget that there's also a port number on the source side. Now, it's just there's some differences with that. The source will randomly generate a port number. So this is nothing that you need to undo or even learn pretty much. But it's going to be some number that is larger than 1024. So basically, since this is a TCP connection, we need to know what is the port number. Now, the port number identified for HTTP is port 80. Uh, you can go to a wide variety of websites and say, what is the port number for whatever application you're using? HTTP, FTP, um, Instant Messenger, Skype, whatever you choose. Those applications are associated to a particular transport protocol, which will likely be TCP. And since they're using TCP or UDP, it doesn't matter, they have a port number assigned to them. So basically, you as a computer, you're connecting to that particular port that is going to provide you that service. In this case, provide you the web services to, you know, look at stock quotes or checking your email. You're accessing that particular port. So basically, port 80 would be what is used on the server side. On the host side, this will be some number that will be randomly generated, but will be larger than 1024. So maybe the number that is chosen to communicate to the web server could be 6778, some randomly generated number, but this is the port number. So if I put a firewall in between here and just start blocking everything, I would see that this host on this IP address is trying to talk to this IP address and the destination port number is 80 and the source port number will be some number greater than 1024. In this case, 